This is my high school. I graduated from this high school. I never wanted to be a teacher. I was going to be an engineer and make a lot of money. I became a teacher because I saw that my community was hurting without good teachers. And I think one of the biggest challenges was that, like, I've been through it, right? And so I want them to be able to know that they can move forward and they can succeed and they can do whatever they choose to do in life. But it's going to take hard work. If you go two blocks away, you'll find prostitution. There's a lot of gang activity in the area. I consider it like a war zone, right? Our kids get up every morning. They have to prepare their mask for how they're going to walk to get to school. So if that mask requires me not to uh, let people see any of my vulnerabilities, that means I may have to put on a very tough mask. And when I get here, hopefully I can take the mask off so I can focus on learning rather than continually wearing this hard shell. A lot of our students don't know how to take the mask off. So I want you to take one of these masks, take the mask. Here's what we're gonna do. On this mask, you're gonna draw what represents you. What are some things that you hold up every day when you walk to school that you let people see? And then on the back, I want you to write, what is it you don't let people see? Like, what's behind the mask? All right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What else? So what I want you to do is I want you to take your mask, and I want you to ball it up. I want you to hit someone across the circle with your mask. Don't, don't leave your seat. Don't leave your seat. You can't leave your seat. Open it up. OK. So who wants to reveal what's on the mask they open? Read it out loud, the, just the front. Funny, caring, and happy. OK. What's behind the mask? Sadness and fear. Sadness and fear. Goofy, kindness, happiness, silliness, smile, and fun. OK. On the back? Anger. Anger. OK. I'll read mine. The front says entertainment. That's what I show on the mask. On the back says pain. Energy, frustration, happiness, friendly, heart, smile, outgoing. And on the back, it says sadness, scared, tears, missing my dad, tr trying to take care of my brothers, and pain. Why do you think we hold back our pain? People don't want everybody to know everything. You got to keep your poker face on. You can't let them know what you got. How hard is that to walk around every day with the poker face on? It's not just an activity on paper. It's about real stuff that we are dealing with as young men that we hide behind because we don't feel safe. Almost 90% of you had pain and anger on the back of that paper. That's not a coincidence. That is real. And we're only eight here. There are hundreds of young men out there that are having the same experience, but they don't have anybody to talk to about it. They're holding back sadness. They're holding back pain. They're holding back anger because they have nobody who is even asking them, what's up with you, man? What's happening? What's going on? How can I support you? I want each of you to be able to say what you need to say. Because if we're ever going to dig down to the deepness of our pain, young men, if we're ever going to dig down to the anger that we're holding behind, so we don't end up another man in jail because we just exploded on the wrong person for the wrong thing, we got to have a safe place to deal with it. That's brotherhood. For many of our boys who are trying to find what it means to be a man, and far too many without a man guiding them, they begin to define their own sense of what it means to be a man. Our boys are yearning for help, 
yearning for guidance and mentorship and leadership. What is there about being a boy in America that places boys at greater risk? And we're seeing clearly that boys who come from low-income families, and I, when I say boys, I mean white boys as well, are less likely to go to college, more likely to drop out of school. In most schools, we start with humiliation to, as a way to punish kids. Write the name on the board, put them in the back of the room, send them out. We rarely stop and ask, what's behind the behavior problem? Why is this child acting out? Denying those kids learning time actually has the effect of pushing many of them right out of school. They will kick a kid out of school knowing that a kid who isn't reading by the fourth grade is going to be in the prison system. Well, you kicked him out twice in the third grade because he did this to his teacher. Ain't nobody in that child's life ever hugged him. Going to a kindergarten class, you're talking about boys, watch, they're, they're doing this. Ask them a question. They can't shut up. They're jumping up and down, waving their hands. All right. Go to the same class when they're six, in the sixth grade. Ask them a question. What do you think? I don't know. Whatever. It's cool. <laughs> I mean, in those five years, the academic pilot light has started to go out because they have decided that school is not the place for them. The number one predictor of student achievement is the expectations of the staff. The school system just ignited. They didn't believe in the kids. In fact, because they were black and brown kids, they didn't think they could do well. Everybody has potential if they're provided with the right support and the right stimulation.